Well, this is my first video of 2021, and this is where normally I would say, you know, Happy New Year. But then as I started preparing for this video, I started thinking about, will it be a Happy New Year? I mean, a lot of people think, and I've seen this all over, you know, discussions and social media, that 2020 was so piss poor that 2021 has to be better. But of course, in a, in a kind of a cosmic sense, a metaphysical sense, that's not true. Just because the years change doesn't mean things have to improve. I mean, if you thought you were alive back in, say, 1914, World War One broke out, and you thought, well, nothing can be worse than 1914, then along came 1915, and then 1916. I mean, this doesn't, the change of year doesn't necessitate improvement. So what I decided to do in this video with it, was to look at that question is, should we think, what right do we have to think that 2021 is going to be better than 2020? The first place to begin, of course, is to look back at 2020 and say, why did 2020 stink? Why did it suck so badly? Now, there's loads of reasons you could point to. There's lots of events and things that happened. But, you know, this isn't a, uh, uh, you know, a National Geographic documentary. This is a YouTube video. So I'm going to look at four things in 2020 that made 2020, that contributed to 2020 being a bad year. And those four things are, you know, the pandemic, deterioration of race relationships in this country, hyperpartisanship, and the breakdown of law and order. Those are the four things, and I'm going to look at them one at a time and see what, if anything, has changed as we move into 2021 from 2020. Let's take law and order first. Are things likely to get better in 2021? My answer would be no. Are we seeing anything that's happened so far since the election, taking November 3rd as a starting point, that would suggest things are going to be better this year? I don't think so. I mean, I know there were people who thought, you know, Joe Biden gets elected, things are going to calm down and everything. I don't see that happening. People are still getting shot in the cities. Chicago just had another bad weekend. Cops are still getting ambushed. If you look at what's happening with law and order around the cities where the problems are, take Los Angeles, where they're no longer going to prosecute uh, resisting arrest. What does that mean? Think about that for a second. If you're not going to prosecute people for resisting arrest, are you going to get more resistance to arrest by police officers or less? Of course you're going to get more because, you know, progressives aren't going to back off now that they've won an election, or at least it appears as of today that they have. As you know, my view is they always double down. They're going to push harder. They're going to do more defunding of the police. They're going to put more restraints on the police. And it's still early. I mean, it's, it's only a couple of days into the new year. But if you look at what's been going on since November, I see nothing that demonstrates to me that law and order isn't going to be a big time issue in 2021, just as it was in 2020. I don't think the streets are going to calm down. I don't think any of these things are going to happen. So as far as that element of 2020 is concerned, I think it just continues to play out in 2021. And dare I say, I think it's probably going to get worse before it gets better. What about hyperpartisanship? We've had hyperpartisanship for four years. You had the left did not accept the fact that they lost the election of 2016. They hate our institutions. They want them changed. They don't like market capitalism. They want that changed. And they were out to get Trump and anybody who supported him. Has that changed since the election? Not that I've seen. My own personal perspective, Twitter, which has had been giving me a hard time for quite some time, has gotten worse. Remember, it's gotten so bad, I finally just gave up on Twitter. That's it. I've had it. Uh, I don't see anything improving. I see hyperpartisanship actually definitely getting worse. Because now the left hasn't changed. If anything, the left's a little more motivated and energized by their victory. They're looking for blood, at least some of them. They're looking to push further and faster to the left. But now, on the right side, 
The right is where the left was four years ago. It thinks it was robbed. The left thought it was robbed by Trump with Russian support. A lot of people on the right now think that we were robbed by Biden with Chinese support. And there's a lot more evidence to support a Biden-China connection than there ever was to support a Trump-Russian connection. I mean, let's be real here. I mean, that's the God's honest truth. And everybody knows that if they have a brain in their head. So I don't see any of that getting better. In fact, I would argue it's already demonstrably worse. Because right now you have both sides, left and right, who have both lost faith in the system. The left didn't have any faith in the system. They don't like the system. The right had faith in the system, but they don't have faith in it anymore because the institutions that are supposed to protect their rights and their views have let them down. The Republican Party's let them down. House of Representatives has let them down. The Senate's let them down. The judicial branch has let them down. So as far as people on the right are concerned, they're where the people on the left were four years ago, and the people on the left are still there. So you have worse hyper-partisanship in this country today than you had in 2020. And I don't see that improving at any point in 2021. So that's going to be just as bad. The third is issue is race-related. And again, if you look at what's been happening since November 3rd, nothing's changed. If anything, I would argue it's gotten worse. We see more push on the college campuses. The other day, it was, I forget what campus it was. You know, every white students have to get vaccinated. You know, African-American students have an option to get vaccinated. They have a choice. And we see this crap going, you know, it's not, they're not even consistent. You know, on the left coast in California, they're going to uh, optimize vaccine uh, availability for people of color. Poor people of color are going to get to the front of the line. And here at college campuses, they're not even going to make people and black people get in line. There's not even any kind of consistency nationally from the left on, on this issue. And we see, especially you look at the Warnock, the Warnock race in Georgia, you know, it's a, race relations in this country are going downhill. And the left is driving the divisions between black and white, black and brown, everybody against everybody, because that's what serves their political purpose. But they're not going to get better in 2021. If anything, they're going to get worse because they're going to be exacerbated by the left for political gain. And there are, are you know, the hustlers on the left who will respond to this and push for more and want more and you know, demand I mean, look at some of the things that are being said about cabinet appointees of, of Joe Biden. You know, you can go, you can read story after story, and nobody will say a single thing about, does this guy, this guy or this woman have any skill? Are they appropriate fit for the job? Do they have any relevant experience? It's all about color. I mean, it's, it's been that way since Biden told him he was going to pick a woman of color as VP. You know, and I've said before, he should have just picked a woman of color for VP, but not said anything about it and said he was going to pick the best person. But he went out and telegraphed that he's not going to pick the best person. He's going to pick the best female person of color. I mean, this is where we're headed in this country. And this is not an improvement. Things are going to get worse. And I see it on a campus where I used to teach. You see it on other campuses. You see it in the cities. Much more focus on race, ethnic identity, racial identity, color identity, religious identity, you know, breaking this country down into its separate identities, much like the multinational Ottoman Empire before it collapsed with this little millets. You know, we're all gonna we're going from being a picture, a photograph, a painting to a mosaic. And the problem is the cement that holds those little pieces of color that make up the mosaic of the United States are the American institutions and traditions. And that's being destroyed. So at the same time we're being turned into mosaic, the left is, by the left, the left is, is at the same time destroying the cement that holds those pieces in place. And this country is just going to go spinning out of control at some point. And that's where we're headed. And we're not getting further from that outcome in 2021. We're getting closer to it. This brings me to the last point, the pandemic. Is that going anywhere in 2021? Look at the news lately. You know, 
worsening third wave, uh, a new strain of coronavirus that we're not sure if it's more deadly, but it certainly spreads a lot faster. It may spread a lot faster, may actually mean it's going to be less deadly. I mean, there's no sense um, in, in the talking here about science that, that this is normal. You know, diseases mutate, diseases evolve. They're like fruit flies. They evolve quickly. That's why in biology you study fruit flies if you want to study evolution because their generations are very short. It's not like humans. We have to go 15 to 20 years for a generation. You know, diseases mutate and evolve all the time. You know, you have chickenpox is a childhood disease now. Probably when it first hit humans hundreds of thousands of years ago, it was deadly. Just as it was deadly when Europeans came into the New World and met the native peoples, who had not had chickenpox. It wasn't, hadn't evolved due to a childhood disease for them. It was a killer. And we've seen that with, with other diseases when you had the Columbian exchange, not just of peoples and animals, but also of, of disease pools. Diseases mutate constantly. You know, the common cold is a, a, a COVID, a coronavirus. It's very unlikely it'll kill anybody today, but it's probably been with us for tens of thousands of years. It's a mutated form. Probably in its early form, the common cold wiped people out and killed them. Today, it's just a parasitic disease that lives off us and gets passed easily from person to person. This is normal for diseases. But, you know, we never hear any of that in the talk about science. They never talk about that. It's just alarmist, alarmism. Oh my God, it's, it's mutating. You know, will the vaccine still work? And I, I, just, I just don't see anything changing on that front. We're already, you know, in the third wave. We're still arguing about lockdowns. Do lockdowns work? Well, if they work, why are we here? Why are we in wave three of a uh, pandemic? You know, you talk about science. Science, you know, you have a, a, a disease and it's a bacterial disease, and they can cure it with a pill. So they get 100 people who have a disease. They give 50 of them the pill. They give the 50 other a placebo. And at the end of it, you see if there's a difference in you know, who gets healed, who gets cured, who doesn't. That's science. That's an experiment. We've been doing that in this country. We have 50 states. They have different laws and lockdowns. Look at California. Some of the most stringent lockdown rules in the country. Look at Florida where I live. Some of the least stringent lockdown rules. We really don't have lockdown rules. We have mask rules. That's about it. And if you look at Florida, do we have problems with COVID? Yeah. You know, rates are up. Deaths are, are up a little bit. Hospitalizations are up. But we don't have a lockdown. California has a severe lockdown and their rates are worse. So, I mean, if you look at that as a scientific experiment, Florida and California, what would you say? You know, where's the evidence that lockdowns work? There is none. You know, theoretically, you would think that they would work, but we've tried them now. The Europeans have tried them. You know, there's outbreaks in Sweden, which didn't do the lockdown route, but there's outbreaks, you know, UK is worse, which did. So what's the connection between lockdowns and spread of COVID? Just looking at the evidence, scientifically, I would argue that there isn't any. Theoretically, you would think lockdowns would be more effective, but is that how it's playing out in California and Florida? And the other problem with COVID is how people are responding to these lockdowns. You know, it was supposed to be a couple of weeks and it was a month. That was nine months ago. You know, people are getting tired of the crap. You can only lock people down so long. You can only destroy their businesses for so long. You can only tell people they can't get out of the house for so long, especially when you have leaders who issue these statements and then, you know, pop up, you know, somewhere in the Caribbean on vacation and get caught, you know, in pictures or lying or whatever they're doing. I mean, these things undermine the situation. Is all this going to improve in 2021? One would hope by the end of the year, COVID will be improving. But at this point, I don't see any reason to believe anytime soon anything's going to change other than getting worse. The people on the left wanted this the answer to failed lockdowns is double down. Further, tougher lockdowns, more, not less restrictions. 
That's all they know to do is use power. And that's what they want to do. And other states are trying to resist that. But you get Biden in there. What if he starts holding up federal aid of, of different kinds to Florida unless we lock down? Will he indirectly force Florida into a lockdown situation? I think that's where we're headed. And you're going to have these crises between the states and the federal government that are going to get worse during 2021 than they were during 2020. The reaction of people to the lockdowns, I think, is going to get worse in 2021 than it is in 2020. And whatever's going on with this virus, I mean, I really just looking at it, I come to the conclusion, this thing's going to run its course. I don't know what that course is. I don't know how long that's going to take. But I don't think there's a damn thing we can do other than, you know, push it down the road a little bit with lockdowns and things to, to stop it. It's going to burn out like all diseases eventually burn out. Plagues stop sooner or later. You know, it's Stein's law in medicine. If something can't go on forever, it will stop. Pandemics can't go on forever. They will stop. Can we do things to make it stop, to make it stop more quickly? I don't know. Vaccines hopefully will help. But how, you know, I, I saw somebody on TV said, well, you know, until we get like 70, 75, 80 percent of the people vaccinated, you know, we're not going to get herd immunity. This is, you know, World Health Organization has changed the definition of herd immunity to be basically vaccine centered. Unless we can do all these things, you know, we can't put, lay off the restrictions. And so he said, well, you're talking about the United States. No, I'm talking about the world because, you know, people move by plane and everything. And I thought, it was 8 billion people on a planet. You know, we have to wait till we, till we vaccinate 6 billion people and then I can take my mask off? And then we can not lock down California? I mean, how long is that going to take? How long does it take to vaccinate 6 billion people? But that's what some people were already saying. And now there's, there's a new video of Fauci from October floating around where he says, well, you know, the vaccine may not really make you immune. It'll just, you, you know, you won't feel the symptoms as much when you get it. Is, is that a vaccine? I, you know, I don't, I don't even know anymore. And people are losing faith in the, you know, the experts. They're losing faith in the, not so much the science, I would argue, although that's the way it's portrayed by the media. I think they're losing faith in the, their leaders' interpretation of science or their leaders' decisions to use science in certain ways that don't seem to make any sense and that don't apply to them. You know, they can go on vacation. We can't. You know, uh, de Blasio can dance in a vacant Times Square. Other people can't go there. You know, you can't go to a, a restaurant for dinner but Gavin Newsom can. I mean, th this is this is the crap that's starting to build up with people, and and they're really getting fed up with it. So, as far as I'm concerned, when you look at the entire set of uh, situations involving the pandemic, 2021 is not going to be any better than 2020. Again, I would argue it's going to be worse. So, where does that leave us for 2021? Is it going to be a better year? Is this going to be a happy new year? I would argue if you look at it in a kind of a systematic way, you look at the things that made 2020 suck and you look at the prospect of them carrying over into 2021, I, I would argue, I would conclude 2021 is going to be worse than 2020. Disagree? Let me know in a comment. Agree? Let me know about that in a comment too. Share the video with your friends. Hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. Hit, give it a thumbs up. Give it a like if you can. Uh, subscribe to the channel. And until the next time, keep fighting.